Hey guys, welcome back to shop. Uh, today we're going to get into some news. Uh, I, I actually kind of mentioned it a couple of videos ago about this uh, uh, $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill that's basically a sellout of the United States of America. It's stuffed with pork. I mean, it's unbelievable. So I, I spent a good portion of today searching the internet for the best article that kind of summarized all of the just over the top Orwellian communist socialist uh, agendas that are out in the open for anyone to see that dares read the 2,702 page bill. So we're going to get right into this. The article I found was called all you need to know about the unaffordable $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill. So I'm going to need my specs for this because, uh, uh, to decipher communism, I have to have my anti-communist glasses on. So let's get this going. This article was written by M Dowling. D-O-W-L-I-N-G, and I'll provide a link in the description. I encourage you to go read this article because I'm just going to scan through the, the main bullet points of the article uh, to set the stage here. It was done on August 5th, 2021. A bipartisan group of 20 senators introduced their $1.2 trillion infrastructure package Sunday, and 17 Republicans signed onto it with 50 Democrats. So, Guys, uh, if you're in a conservative or a red state and one of your Republicans signed on to this crap, uh, you need to either make sure they get recalled or primaried in the next election cycle, uh, even if that means you have to run yourself. I mean, we need people of common sense, not people that have been indoctrinated with all this legal ease and all this bull crap that they teach people in college these days, all these uh, you know, uh, critical race theories and all these different things that are just unbelievably dumb, but they show their ugly head in this uh, bipartisan bill here. So let's get into this a little bit. So the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act has 2,702 pages and was described by lead negotiator, Democrat Arizona Senator Kirsten Sinema, or Sinema, however you say that, as a historic investment in infrastructure. Yeah, it's historic, all right. This is the historic selling out of our kids and our grandkids and everybody else in future generations. $1.2 trillion. I mean, I can't emphasize that enough, how much a trillion freaking dollars is. And they're gonna spend at least 1.2 of them that we'll know about. And I'm sure they'll stuff other stuff in there along the way. So. The definition of infrastructure sets a bizarre socialist precedent, and I totally agree with the author of this. The package includes $550 billion in new spending. The rest is redirected spending that was already authorized by Congress. So oftentimes they'll do this stuff. They'll say, oh yeah, well it's paid for. See, we already have it paid for. We've got this thing figured out. It's all paid for. That's what Biden and all the people that support this, this monstrosity, this socialist, communist, Marxist monstrosity, that's what they're all saying. Oh, it's all paid for. But the, uh, what is it called? The CBO? They said, no, it's not. It's not even half paid for. So large portions are redirected spending that came from unused dollars allocated by the American Rescue Plan, ARP, and other COVID-19 pandemic relief measures. Uh, basically what they're doing is that some of these states weren't able to spend all that money that they printed out from the first and second round and third and fourth round of stimulus. So uh, they're sitting on that money. So now Biden's going to take that money back and reallocate that for these socialist plans here. Uh, the $1.2 trillion Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act includes, this is what I wanted to get to and why I really like this article, is they don't tell you every single thing that's in this 2,700-page bill. Obviously, no one could. No one read this thing. Why is this? Why are bills like this allowed to go forward where they're so stuffed full of pork and so stuffed full of things that have nothing to do with infrastructure, and yet, supposedly, these 17 Republicans signed on and got this thing at least pass the Senate. I guess it still has to pass Nancy Pelosi's house, but I think we all know how that's going to go. Uh, we should be trying, though. We should be contacting our, our our national congressmen and telling them, hell no, don't vote for this thing. Vote no on this thing. This is a monstrosity. It gives government unprecedented power. So let's get into this. So Amtrak will receive $32 billion for operations between the years 2022 and 2026. $58 billion total. The state-owned corporation is a favorite of Joe Biden, who was, nickta who was nicknamed Amtrak Joe. And it's not a coincidence that I'm, I mean, I'm like 99% sure Amtrak is a union-operated deal. And I just told my wife about this earlier, uh, just kind of in passing here. This is not in the article, but I read something a couple of few days ago 
that even though this infrastructure bill has a strong emphasis on uh, modernizing and, you know, uh, uh, sustainable transportation and putting all these words, you know, these, these basically uh, uh, socialist buzzwords that they like to use. This bill is stuffed full of these things and their pet projects. Well, one of them is that they're going to bolster up solar electric vehicles or, or electric vehicles, in, you know, EVs in particular. They're going to bolster those up again. And there was a failed program that Obama was a part of that, that included companies like Solyndra and a couple of others where they were just essentially wasting government money, but it was profitable to the people that were invested in Solyndra and these other companies like this. Well, what I wanted to tell you about off topic is I heard like three days ago, Elon Musk was excluded from the uh, electric car vehicle deals because why? Because Elon Musk's company, Tesla, is non-union. So, doesn't matter that Elon Musk probably makes some of the best electric vehicles that there are and has made trucks and other heavy equipment that, you know, are in the, in the uh, testing phases right now. Does that, none of that stuff matters. What matters is he's not a union company. So Biden doesn't support anyone that's not union. It's picking winners and losers. So back to what we were talking about. Uh, uh, every day, Amtrak Joe rode the train to work every day from his home in Willington, Delaware, making sure it was continually funded. Hunter was one of the directors with no qualifications for the job. So here we go again. He got his whole family in there. The very definition of nepotism, Joe Biden displays it, I mean, on a constant basis. So, uh, and cronyism. Amtrak received $1.7 billion from the ARP, and that is the American Rescue Plan, which passed in March. And, you know, it was one of those COVID deals, uh, a bailout thing for the, for the Amtrak, basically. They got $1.7 billion back in March. Before the bailout money, Amtrak was $1.6 billion in debt. So they're an upside-down company that is not profitable, and yet the government is pumping them full of money. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that is? Huh. I don't know. Maybe it's so uh, Amtrak Joe can get those votes from the union members. Maybe that's what it's about. Moving on. So there's a provision in this uh, Infrastructure Act. I mean, it's hard for me to even call it that with a straight face because it has so little to do with roads and bridges and, and you know, damn sure has nothing to do with securing the border so or building the wall or finishing any of that stuff. No, no, no. It's got, here. here's one for you. You're going to maybe be shocked by this, but there's a drunk driving prevention thing in there. So they're going to force vehicle manufacturers to install drunk driving devices. Although drunk driving is not a big problem, it will make, mar make cars more expensive. The bill requires passenger motor vehicles manufactured after the effective date of such standard to be equipped with advanced drunk driving prevention technology. It's a mandate with no funding. And they said in this thing, as I was reading it, uh, the manufacturers will have two years to respond to this. So between now and the next two years, if you ever desire to buy a new car and you don't want to have a bunch of extra crap stuffed in it by the government and have them tracking you, uh, you probably better buy it now. Although I bet there's already tracking equipment in a lot of these vehicles and they can just turn it on. So if you've got GPS or, you know, even just carrying your cell phone around with you, uh, will allow them to track you. Diversity recruitment is up next. The Department of Transportation will receive 20 million from 2023 to 2026 to increase awareness of career opportunities in the transportation sector and diversity, including race, gender, ethnicity, veteran status, and socioeconomic status of professionals in the transportation sector. So, I mean, there it is, guys. Government is just, I mean, they're doing everything they can to spread their love around. And so now the Department of Transportation will have an extra 20 million so that they can make sure that there's plenty of diversity. And what that means to me is they're gonna be getting rid of people that are qualified, proven people in the positions because of skin color. It's basically reverse racism. They're gonna get rid of all white people because this is critical race theory. You probably have to take a little class about uh, critical race theory if you work at the Department of Transportation. I mean, no kidding, that's for real. The Secretary of Transportation will also be able to establish a pilot program to demonstrate a national motor vehicle per mile user fee. They're going to track you and they plan on having a pilot program to see and demonstrate if it's a good idea or not to have a national motor vehicle per mile user fee. Uh, that's a big deal, guys. I mean, they're basically telling you 
that they are going to track you everywhere you go, every place you go. If you've had a drink or two, uh, they're going to tell you whether or not you're allowed to drive your car home. They're not going to, you know, count on your own self judgment anymore. And again, I mean, I, I mean, not to say that drunk driving is a good thing because it's not, but clearly as individuals who practice self governance in this country as founded, this is government overreach. So, now, if you've already had a problem, I have no problem with the police department making you install one of these devices in your vehicle if you've already had a you know a history of uh, DUI or drinking and driving or whatever. So that's a different deal altogether. This is the federal government admitting they're going to track you everywhere you go by any means necessary. And a lot of the cars are already equipped with tracking software, so they can just turn that on or use your cell phone. I mean, whatever. Or maybe it'll be uh, your... RFID chip in the future whenever they make you get one of those. Uh, that's not in the bill, though, by the way. I'm surprised it's not. I'm surprised there's not a provision in there for, like, uh, mandatory individual tracking outside of the cell phone system. I'm surprised. It may be. There's 2,700 pages. If I missed it, let me know, guys, because this is a nightmare scenario coming to, coming to play out right in front of us right now. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to make a phone call at least or make a few emails to your, your national congressman? I mean, what, what, what else can we do about it, guys? I mean, the Republicans have sold us out on this deal, and they've been selling us out ever since Biden was, was installed into office. So next up, highway teardowns. What does that mean? Well, the bill allocates up to $1 billion for highway teardowns, an equity provision for which Biden originally requested $20 billion. So, I mean, he's actually only getting $1 billion out of the 20 he actually initially requested. $20 billion to tear down highways. So they say this is to resolve the problem of racist highways. I mean, what is a racist highway? Is it one that says like Donald J. Trump motorway or something like that? Is that a racist highway? Is that what they mean by that? Because I don't know what that means. I don't know of any racist highways. Do you guys? But they're going to tear them down. He's got $1 billion out of the 20 he requested. They're going to they're tear them down. These racist highways. It's actually leftist climate change. Uh, that's what this author says of this article. And I agree with that. They're going to resolve the problem of racist highways. Just unfreaking believable There's no such thing as racist highways. Local block grants. Pork selling out the federal taxpayer. So here's where we get into how these people sold us out for a minute. Key senators who negotiated the agreement will receive billions of dollars in pork for their states. So that's why these 17 Republicans signed on, as they were bought and paid for by the pork that's in this 2,700 pages. Here's, here you go. The Department of Transportation will fund necessary reconstruction of the Alaska Highway, a 1,387-mile-long road first built in World War II. The legislation provides for an applicable competitive grant program. Republican Alaska Senator Lisa Murkowski was part of the bipartisan group that negotiated the package. She is selling out America to buy votes. That's exactly what that is. Lisa Murkowski. So she's your senator. You probably need to make sure she gets primaried next time around. I don't care if she does have an R by her name. It's time for us to get rid of the people that are not conservatives in the Republican Party. Okay, so here's another one for you. The Central Utah Project Completion Account gets $50 billion. Well, guess who that, who, who that is? That's Mitt Romney. It's part of the deal. He's selling out the federal taxpayer for votes. Here's another one. Mittens Romney. I can't, I can't believe that I had to vote for this coward back in the day because it came down to him versus Obama. And of course, I wasn't going to vote for the flat out communist. I thought Romney was halfway decent back then. Boy, was I wrong. He's a complete socialist, Marxist, communist sellout. That's what he is. Here we go. Democrat West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin and Republican Ohio Senator Rob Portman were members of the bipartisan group, and Manchin's wife Gail serves as a federal co-chair for the ARC. Republican West Virginia Senator Shelley Moore Capito, who voted for it, previously negotiated directly with Biden on infrastructure, and Republican Ken Kentucky Senator Mitch McConnell. So McConnell, Romney, Manchin, Portman, uh, what was the other lady's name? Lisa Murkowski, and there's more. Go look up the 17 people who voted for this and see if one of them is your state representative or your state senator. Go check it out. 
So they're selling out their nation for, for money and for votes. It's typical DC swamp stuff, guys. I mean, we knew this was going to happen when Biden took office the way he did, especially what many of us didn't know was how the scale or the scope of this. I mean, it's huge guys. This is selling out our country to socialism. That's what it is. So wait, there's more. There's a study on impact of transportation on terrestrial and aquatic species and habitat. So they're going to do an environmental impact study and spend billions of dollars to see how bad cars are hurting the terrestrial and aquatic species and their habitat. So I'm sure once they get the conclusion of their study, Biden will have to tear down a bunch more roads. That'd be my guess. These racist roads that he says there are out there. He'd have to, he's going to tear down a whole bunch more of those. There's $50 million for 10 transportation resilience and adaptation centers of excellence, which will do climate change reports and engage disadvantaged communities, a.k.a. CRT, uh, put into the transportation system. Unbelievable. Oh, by the way, I almost missed this one. They're going to upgrade Amtrak services in, wait for it, Canada. They're going to, this bill is building up the Amtrak services and their capabilities in Canada. This, guys, is what a communist takeover looks like right here. Go check out this article. Uh, it's highly informative. All you need to know about the unaffordable $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill. I'm sure there are things in there that are probably anti-Second Amendment. I'm sure there are many things in there that are probably anti-constitution in general. You know, I was reading this whole thing earlier about all the different things that Joe Biden has done, unconstitutional things. Like uh, the most recent thing was the uh, CDC takeover of the moratorium on renters or on, on landlords not allowed to go and kick people out for not paying rent. I mean, that is unbelievable, guys. If you're a property owner, we talked about this before a few videos ago, though, but if you're a property owner, they are punishing you. You still have to make your monthly mortgage payments, but... Uh, according to the CDC, you're not allowed to kick these people out. So what is this doing? I mean, this is a federal takeover of the housing market. It may be soft right now. It's not full bore, but they're putting their toe in the water to see if they can get away with it. And so far it looks like they're going to guys. So, um, this is already, I believe it's already passed in the Senate. So this nightmare monstrosity can only be stopped as far as I know, uh, by, the house and i doubt very seriously nancy pelosi's congress is going to be against this bill in fact what i'm hearing is she was pissed off because she wanted another 3.5 trillion on top of this for more handouts buying more votes so i read another article a little while earlier and it was all about how we're not going to make it till 2022 the midterms we're not going to make it they're hell-bent on destroying this country. And our dollar, our health care system uh, is being taken over by tyrants. I mean, on and on and on. I mean, just kind of in passing, I was flipping through the Gateway Pundit earlier, and I saw that uh, uh, there was a Christian group out in Portland, I believe it was, and they were attacked by Antifa. And that's not the big story. I mean, that's pretty common nowadays for Christians to be attacked by Antifa. But... What's not so common is the police refused to show up. They were probably ordered not to go. And these Antifa people came in, pepper sprayed them, uh, you know, beat on some of them, uh, broke their equipment, broke their, their PA system and their speakers, stole different things. But that's okay if you're Antifa, I guess, according to uh, Biden's government. Batting down the hatches, guys. Uh, they're trying to push us towards economic collapse. It's apparent in all of their spending bills, all of their taxation things that they're doing, all of the things they're doing to landlords that you know are homeowners and stuff that rent out to people. I mean, this is a takeover, a communist takeover of the United States of America. As I've said before, you know, I stand for liberty. I hope you do too. But what does that really mean? You know, what is what does standing for liberty mean? in 2021. I mean, uh, for one, I mean, the way I do it is I make these videos and I try to get the message out so that people will pay attention to this stuff. 
uh, even in sometimes I think to the detriment of my channel. I know it is because YouTube has shadow banned my channel for merely for speaking out against the mainstream narrative. So that's one way you can do it. Other ways you can do it are get involved locally with your local governments because as Chris Ann Hall said before, and I'm wearing their shirt by the way, as Chris Ann Hall, go check them out on YouTube while they're there. As she said before that, you know, this is not about the federal government. It's about your local and state governments. You have to take control of your local and state governments, even if that means finding people. If you're not the one, find somebody and get behind them and support them. Somebody that actually believes in the founding of this country, the constitution and liberty and individual, you know, liberty and, and self-governance and stuff like that, that we talk about all the time on the channel, find people that are for those things. And I know it's hard because they'll all say they're for those things while they're running. That's, that's the real rub is that I'm sure when Mitt Romney and Mitch McConnell were running, they were probably the most conservative people in the room, but you've got to be able to, you know, question them or use different uh, tactics to figure out, are these people really who they say they are? One way to do that is look at their records. So take back your local and state governments. If you can't take back your, your state capital uh, and you're too far gone, take back your sheriff's office because the sheriff is, can be a great defender of the constitution if you have the right sheriff in your county. So guys, keep your powder dry. Things are going to get way, way worse. That is all for today. I appreciate you tuning in. Thanks for letting me get this out there and I hope you absorbed it. Go check this article out and others that we've talked about in the past. Uh, support Patriots on YouTube by sharing their videos and you know giving them thumbs up, commenting. Even if you just comment, hey, I like it or hey, I don't like it, whatever. Just go and help people out because that's the only way I know to get past the algorithm that YouTube has put into place. Appreciate you tuning in. Until then, we'll see you next time.